Hello and welcome to this getting started tutorial with Solar. In this video we're going to cover how to install and run Solar on your local machine, how to create and what represents a Solar core or collection, then we're going to index some documents and do some basic searching, we'll also send some queries over HTTP using curl, and we'll finish the tutorial with a tour of the administration console. You have all the commands that I execute here in the description. So let's get started. There is no graphical user interface installer for Solar, but you'll soon see that the process is so simple that you don't need one. All you need to do is download the binary distribution, zip or tar, and extract it. But before we do that, let's make sure that we have the necessary pre-requirements. You need Java 8 or greater installed on your local machine in order to run Apache Solar 8. To verify that you have the correct version of Java, open a command line tool and enter Java minus version. You should see an output that looks similar to the following. Even though Solar requires Java, this doesn't mean that you have to use Java in your application to interact with Solar. Client interactions happens over HTTP and therefore you can use any language that provides an HTTP client library. In addition, a number of open source client libraries are available for Solar for popular languages such as .NET, Python, Ruby, PHP and Java. After we make sure that we have Java installed, we'll continue with downloading the binary distribution of Solar 8.5 from Apache website and then extract it the downloaded archive. Let's visit the Solar download page from Apache We'll begin by unzipping the Solar release. Here, I'll use the tar command to extract this archive. Minus xvzf x is for extracting the archive file, v is for verbose, Z is for the type of archive, in this case gzip, and F is for the source file. I will specify the source archive and then the destination directory. The destination directory is basically where Solar will be installed. On Windows, you can use the built in zip extraction programs or use a tool like WinZip. Now, I'll create an environment variable called Solar Home. You can name it whatever you want, and I will store in it the path where Solar is installed. Export Solar underscore Home, and I'll give it as value the path of Solar installation. This will save us some time, since we'll not have to always introduce the Solar installation directory. However, this variable will be lost when you close the terminal. Now I will change my working directory to the folder where Solar is installed using the variable that I just created. Change directory dollar sign solar underscore home. To launch Solar, move to the directory where you extracted Solar. I'm already there, so I will run bin slash solar start on port 8983 or bin slash solar dot cmd start minus p8983 on windows. During initialization you'll see some log messages printed to the console. If everything goes well you should see the following log message near the bottom. That was so easy that you might wonder what was accomplished. To be clear, you now have a running version of Solar 8.5 on your computer. To verify that Solar started correctly, direct your web browser to the Solar administration page by checking http localhost colons 8983 slash solar. Behind the scenes, we launch a Java web server named Jetty 
listening on port 8983. Solar is a web application which runs by default in a Jetty web container and in turn Jetty container runs using the Java virtual machine. On the left side we can see the main navigation toolbar. Currently we have no core defined so let's create one. But first let's clarify what a solar core is. A solar core represents a single physical index. In solar literature it's often used the term collection to designate an index. However, a collection only has meaning in the context of a solar cluster in which a single index is distributed across multiple server. Consequently, I think that for now it's easier to focus on understanding what a solar core is. There is one solar home directory set per Jetty server. Each solar home directory can host multiple cores per server and each core has a separate directory. For example core 1 containing a core specific configuration file and the actual index. A solar core must have a config set which is a set of configuration files. At a minimum it must include two configuration files. The schema file named either manage schema or schema.xml and the solar config xml file. The manage schema is the main configuration file that governs the index structure. The solar config file is the main solar configuration file that defines how a core should behave. We won't get into much details now. Luckily, Solar ships with two sample config sets available out of the box. These samples are found under slash server slash solar slash config sets. And the question now is which config set would you like to start with? The default one is a bare bone option, so we're going to start with the one whose name includes tech products. Thus, let's create these config sets to create our first core. In the administration console, Click on the core box and in the instance ID field we're going to copy paste the path of the tech products config sets. To get the full path you can use the pwd command. Let's give this index a name, for instance tech product and the rest of the configuration will remain as the default one. At this point Solar created the core and we can execute queries against it. When you start Solar for the first time there are no documents in the index. It's an empty server waiting to be filled with data. We'll cover indexing details in another section. For now We'll ignore the technicalities and we'll store some example data into the solar index so that we can try out some queries. The sample data is found under solar installation directory, then example slash example docs. We'll use a tool called post.jar which comes with solar installation to index some sample documents. Post.jar is a Java library and to use it we should run the following command java minus jar then the first argument which is the name of the collection in my case collection equal tech products then the name of the jar post.jar and finally we specify that we want to add all documents which have an xml extension you should see an output similar to the following the post library sends xml documents to solar using http after all the documents are sent to Solar, the post application issues a commit which makes the example documents findable in Solar. To verify that the example documents were added successfully, go to the query page in Solar Administration Console and select Tech Product Core. Then access the Query tab. Execute Find All Documents and you should see All Added Documents. Congratulations, you now have data in your solar. Now we are ready to execute some basic queries. It's time to see solar shine. Certainly, 
Solar Mesh trained its powerful query processing. You already use Solar Query Form to execute the Find All Documents query. Now, let's take a quick tour of the other feature in the User Interface Form so that we could get a sense for the type of queries Solar supports. The first field we see is called the Request Handler, and its job is to process requests that hit the Solar server. Each request of type Query will be processed by a handler with the name Select, since its job is to select and retrieve documents. Likewise, if we go to the Document section, we'll see an update handler instead. We'll learn about Request Handler in another section. Going back, next, we have a series of parameters to build and refine our query. First, we have the query string or the queue parameter, which is the main way to build queries. The syntax here is rather simple and flexible. One way is to specify the name of the field, then columns, then the value. Star columns star finds all documents in Solar. Let's change that to a name columns canon. This will find all documents which have the name field with the value canon. Sometimes though, you want to search only for the value canon, and you don't want to specify which field contains this value, similar to a Google search. We'll learn how to do that in the Solar Queries section. Keep in mind that queries which are executed via the queue parameter will display the results ranked based on relevancy. Then we have the filter query parameter, which restricts the result set. Let's restrict our query to documents which have the in stock field set to true. You may wonder what's the difference between filter query param and query param, since you could build the same query and you'll probably get the same results. The primary difference is that the filter queries doesn't affect the relevance score. As mentioned earlier, when using the queue parameters, Queries have to not only find matching documents, but also calculate how relevant each document is. Another difference is that the filter queries are caching the results, since they are simple checks for inclusion or exclusion, which makes them very fast to compute. We'll talk more about this in the Solar Queries section. Next, we can specify the sort field and the sort order. In this case, we want results sorted by the price field in ascending order, so that the documents with the lowest price are listed first. Then, we can specify which page we want to see, assuming there will be a lot of results and we want to apply pagination. Here, we specify the starting page for results, which is zero base, and here is the page size, which restricts the number of results returned per page, which is 10 by default. Next field, allow us to specify which fields to return for each document in the results. I'm interested only in name, price, features, and score. You might want to define some fields here, in order to reduce the bytes transferred over the network and thus improving the performance. Note that now I could also see the score field, which is hidden by default. Next, we can define the default search field. If I don't specify a field explicitly for the queue parameter, or if I don't have a catch all fields, which you will see later, then the query will fall back on this field. Let's say it is feature. Now I can say 29 ppm instead of features columns 29 ppm. Furthermore, we could select the format of the response. So far, we only seen the results return in JSON, but Solar supports other formats such as CSV, comma separated values, XML, and language specific format for popular language. For instance, Solar can return Python specific format that allows the response to be safely parsed into Python. Finally, there are expandable options to enable advanced features, such as face hitting and heat highlighting. As you may imagine, this form isn't designed for end users. Solar provides the query form so that developers and administrators have a way to send queries 
without having to always formulate HTTP requests manually or develop a client application to send queries to Solar. But in real life application, you would have an UI with a search bar probably which sends HTTP requests to Solar. All interaction with Solar Core services such as the query processing are performed with HTTP request. Therefore, Solar can be queried with REST clients, curl, wget, postman, as well as via native clients libraries, available for many programming languages. To check this, we will see that when you fill out the query form, an HTTP GET request is created and sent to Solar. The URL sent by the admin UI to Solar is shown near the top right. If you click on it, your browser will show you the raw response. The form field names shown previously correspond to parameters passed to Solar in the HTTP GET request. If we want to change the query to show us all documents, we could change this URL. Furthermore, we could actually execute queries from the terminal. To do this, we'll use a tool called curl. Curl is a very popular command line tool for getting or sending data over HTTP. It can be installed on all operating systems including Windows and Mac OS. To use curl, give this URL shown in browser in quotes on the command line. What's happening here is that we are using Solar Query Parameter Q with a special syntax that are requesting all documents in the index. However, not all documents are returned to us, since the query returns by default only 10 documents. You can request more documents by changing the rows parameter. Finally, let's take a quick tour of the rest of the administration console. I recommend that you start clicking through some of the pages yourself as an exercise for you to get a sense for what's available on each page. However, here are some highlights of what the administration console provides. First, on the dashboard, we can see how this Solar instance is configured. Next, on logging, you can view recent log messages. On the core admin tab, you are able to add or manage multiple cores. On Java properties are the Java system properties. For instance, you can see where your Solar Home is set via the Solar Home property. In addition to these pages, there are a number of core specific pages for each core in your server. Recall that the example server we've been working with has only one core named Tech Products. This functionality provides a simple form allowing you to execute various Solar indexing commands directly from your browser. Here, you can view currently active schema and Solar config for this particular core. On the plugin stats tab, we could view many kind of statistics about Solar Core for instance, the cache hit ratio. And finally, on the schema tab, we could get information about top terms for a specific field using the load term info on the schema browser.